way station in the long spawn positions is going to be the host of game number two. Game one was a 28 minute marathon of a ZVZ with constant aggression, constant trading, and for the majority of it, neck and neck. It really would have, if it was a race, it would have been a photo finish. That's how close it was. But let's introduce these two. Spawning in the top left hand position as the blue Zerg player. He lost game number one, is battling to stay in the tournament. Lambo. And his opponent down to the bottom right. The pink Zerg player. 1-0 up. One game away from advancing to the finals. Johnny Rico. So what does it mean getting into the finals? For a start, you're guaranteed some of that 75 euro prize money. You're guaranteed at least 25 euros, which for an evening's work, which it is for these two, they're both pros, I would much prefer winning 25 euros than zero euros, if I had a choice in the matter. Alternatively, they could win. Now I'd give them 50 euros and a guaranteed spot in the monthly finals, where there's 600 euros on the line. Pretty cool times. Little switch up here from Rico. He's opening hatch first, for now. Knows where his opponent's spawning. That's the cool thing about way station, is you can actually spawn in either top left, bottom right, or top right, bottom left. And it's a very different map in how it will play out depending on those spawn positions. But cross is the only possible way. If you're in top right to lower left, short rush distance, taking your natural base is a bit easier to defend because of a tighter choke there. You've got the island expansion, which we may see some Terrans play into. A harder to hold third base, and also a very short rush distance. Top left to bottom right, you've got a very... Not easy, but a relatively simple to take third base that has a lot of dead space around it, making it vulnerable to air. And easy to take fourth as well. Even fifth, to be honest, you can get up relatively quick. And a long rush distance. It suits macro games. I like this little dude as well. I want to name him. I don't know what he's doing, but he, he's consistently like building onto this. And now, he's, he's tireless, whatever he's doing. It's like a super mule, a super flying mule banshee. If a banshee and a mule had a love child, it would be this thing. Look at it. Anyway, enough about that. We've got Rico coming out with four lings compared to the two of Lambo. Means that he's one lava down, but could get a little bit of damage through. It's highly unlikely he'll get some damage through with four lings, but it's, it's possible. Meanwhile, Rico, yet again, Actually, you know what? Again, actually going gas this game. So both players with speed, and both players actually keeping the three drones in gas. In come the Zerglings now. They're going to look to try and get a drone kill. Do you manage to get one? If they get a second one, it's completely worthwhile. It's going to be close. Can the drone get away? It can. Okay, drone escapes. So that was actually a neutral trade. It was slightly worse for Johnny Rico because obviously until that drone died, Lambo was able to mine a little bit of resources with it, so minor differences. Elsewhere, Johnny Rico spreading some creep, Lambo choosing not to. Rico is one of the few Zerg players I've actually seen who spreads creep consistently in ZVZ. He's also adding in a Baneling Nest, whereas Lambo deciding that the early lair is a much better option for him. And this could signal a very early Mutalisk play, we'll wait to see if he takes that fourth gas. If the fourth gas is taken, which it is, I'm pretty confident we're going to be seeing a super fast Spire. And it's a cool choice because this is the likely third that most Zerg players will take. And look at how much dead space there is all around it. It makes picking it off or harassing it with Mutalisks a very viable and a very potent strategy. But what Lambo's going to have to contend with is a big Baneling play from Rico. Lambo sees the Zerglings and Banelings coming through. He doesn't really have much here, so gonna have to contend 
with this aggression. One spine core already going down. A couple of drones getting caught. Another spine getting worked away at slowly. Lambo doesn't actually have a baneling nest. So he's going to have a tough time defending this. Johnny Rico detonates one baneling to take out the lava. Always a good choice. Lambo frantically trying to get out his own baneling nest and also get down his own lings. But this is going to be very tough to do. His baneling nest now finishes up, but his natural hatchery taking quite a bit of fire. A baneling detonates there up against the queens, but the queens get surrounded. A detonation onto them isn't actually a terrible choice. If the queens go down, it would have been a massive win since there's only two. It would have completely cut all of the production. Rico bought himself a bit of time. He's taking a third base. Drone count level. Roach one coming down off the back of this. And it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. Lambo defended that beautifully. Pulling the drones, evacuating the natural base, and using the double queen on the wall off. Exactly how you should defend that sort of play. And as a result, Lambo has a bit more control. He has a bit more map dominance, and it can threaten this third. Rico has to be fairly defensive at the moment. Back goes Johnny Rico there with a couple of links, maybe looking to get a little poking and prodding. Third base has been scouted by Lambo. He knows it's on its way down, and he does have this spire, which is later than he would have wanted with his original game plan, but his original game plan wouldn't have accounted to defending against that big Zergling Baneling pressure. Rico continuing on this pressure now, knowing that his opponent wants to be spending I ha actually, has Rico seen the spy? No, he hasn't. So he doesn't know that his opponent wants to be spending gas elsewhere. But he does know that his opponent is attempting to get up a third. Bailings. Getting a couple of hits off. Cancel force on the third. A big win there for two reasons. Firstly, Johnny Rico has his own third up. So he's really getting a big advantage here. He's also attacking into the main base. Getting a couple of drone kills here and there. Scouts the spire, which gives him ample time to get spore coolers down. But by delaying the third, he delays... The 5th and 6th gas geyser, which is about 200 gas per minute, which is about 2 mutalisks per minute. That's a big loss in terms of how many muters Lambo's going to be able to, 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 uh, going to be able to produce over the next couple of minutes. Again, Rico now coming through. He wants to force another cancel here. And with a fair few roaches, has a wide shot at doing it. The muters are going to be a bit more problematic, as there are a good number of them on the field. And with the lings as well... Just being slightly irritating to try and stop. But more units coming across the map. These roaches and lings doing everything in their power to prevent reinforcements coming through, but also to try and delay this third base. The muters, not good in a head up trade against larger groups of units. These roaches pushing through. The lings up in the main base, stopping mining there. The roaches in the natural out of range of the spine and not being attacked by the mutalisks are racking up a fair few kills now. Rico's also preventing the mutalisks from harassing, minimizing any potential they've got. Super early hive coming down now as well from Lambo. Wasn't scouted by Rico, but Rico takes a commanding lead in the drone count. 54 to 46. And eight drones and a base up is going to be really helping him economically. Mining a fairly large chunk more. Throwing down spore coolers as well at each of his bases, just to make sure that they're nicely defended and not at risk to these muters. Of which, there's 10 out, which is more than just a, a tech switch number where you get, say, maybe 6 out and then tech switch into something else. This is a commitment to the mutalisks doing something effective. With a good number of queens and a good number, and the investors coming out too, these muters have got a limited window to do good stuff. Transfuse is even being used on overlords to make sure they stay up. Lambo not getting many advantages this game. And overall, I would say Johnny Rico is the one in the driver's seat so far this game. Lambo is having to play quite reactionary. Losing an overlord there, supply blocks Lambo. And it's things like that that add bumps into your build and your overall play that you really want to try and avoid. May get an investor there. Has enough energy for a fungal growth. Going to blow it nice and quick. Two more investors coming over. The queen's frantically... Trying to get in position as well. Getting these muters going to be the big win. This is what Rico really would have wanted. Getting a couple of them. Three in total. Which is still 300 gas worth. So worth losing a single infestor for. 
but Lambo back at home going up into those Ultralisks. And I mentioned this in one of the previous series today. ZVZ Ultras are fantastic because there isn't a fantastic response to them. There's no units in a Zerg's arsenal where you go, you know what, that'll do really well against the Ultras. Aside from things like a hard counter, Broodlords would, but just because they're Broodlords. But Broodlords are actually quite vulnerable in ZVZ because your opponent can just get out some Corruptors. So, they are a really nice choice. They can tank up a lot of damage. They don't get rooted by Fungal Growth being a massive unit. And that makes it very exciting to see how Rico is going to be trying to stop them. Both players on three bases now. Rico's still up in the work account and he's sneaking through a couple of roaches. He's been doing this a lot today and I love these little roach attacks. The natural hatch incredibly low actually. Where are all the units? This could be disastrous. Lambo left this base completely exposed. It goes down, losing a third of his production capability in one fell swoop. An investor also likely to die as well now. And this is not what Lambo wanted to be happening. His army just seems to be nowhere. So long to get out some ultras, which finally hit the field. But losing that natural is a devastating loss. And suddenly this game is looking to be in the bag for Rico. He's in such a good position now. It's insane. Lambo is trying to produce hive tech. And a lot of ultralisks off of just two bases worth of economy now. Rico is getting ready to secure his fourth, and he's got a commanding lead in army supply and the drone gun. Catches a single mutalisk there with a fungal growth, a couple more chilling around. They need to be very careful because these hydras can see them. Lambo not controlling them for the moment. The hydras can engage head up on that. Get two more. And these are some little wins that are just compounding on the large advantage that he got from sniping up this natural base. Johnny Rico approaching maxed. Going up to Hive himself, adding in the plus one carapace, already with plus two missile attack. Lambo attempting to secure up a fourth. Johnny Rico is a bit ahead on that though. Lambo actually <laughs> really going to be starting to struggle now because of just this last of income. If we take a look compared while this natural base is down, actually it's not as large as I thought it would be. I'm not. Lambo getting some more income from somewhere. This is insane. But still, Rico mining a good chunk more, specifically on the gas there. But he's got to contend with the Ultralisks. Lambo, not as far behind as I thought he was, but the income isn't the only problem. Obviously, with the hatch going down, there's lack of production. That's somewhat less important because of the fact he's going Ultralisks. So lava aren't such an essential resource. But this is still a very interesting game, where Rico does have an advantage. But Lambo managing to claw his way back into making things a bit closer to the line. Lambo being relatively defensive. He doesn't want to push into this if he can avoid it. Johnny Rico has now got his hive done. Not utilizing it in any way yet. Lambo adding in adrenal glands just to boost the DPS of those Zerglings. Four bases for Rico. Four bases now for Lambo. Although Lambo knows about the 4th base of Rico, but Rico doesn't know about the 4th base of Lambo until now. A couple of drones going to get sniped off here. Actually quite a few. The army frantically trying to get back in order to defend this. Rico would be best just prioritizing down drones if he can, manually targeting them. But he's using this as a distraction. And luckily for Lambo, he isn't falling for it. The aim there was Rico wanted to force this army to come back and defend. So he could come down and snipe the third. But Lambo didn't pull all of his army. Just enough to defend it. A couple of fungals coming through of course. Doesn't root those ultralisks. But does still deal with damage. A lot of infested terrans also coming through. This blocks up the pathing of the ultras. Providing a safety net for the hydralisks. But the ultras coming from all angles now. And they're getting a good amount of damage through. No queens though for Lambo. Means there aren't any transfusers. And Rico doing... A good job of cleaning out a lot of Lambo's army while counter-attacking, or while going for a multi-prong attack with some roaches towards this fort, preventing mining. The resupply is going to make a big difference though, because there isn't actually that much money for Lambo at the moment. And while he does have a few ultras coming through, look at the supply difference. It's massive. 
and that's because Rico is just flooding with units and is going for a quick follow-up attack, hoping that his opponent won't have the money or the time to get out a solid defense force. But the ultra count still looking really solid. Seven ultras, three more on the way, taking it to ten, up against 46, now 50 roaches. Rico cannot break this position quite yet. And of course, these ultras have got the four two upgrades. So they've got five armor, which means they actually take a sizable less chunk of damage off of these roaches and hydras. Rico about to have plus three missile attack though, which is going to be really useful in preventing further damage. But still, things looking surprisingly level considering the kind of knockbacks Lambo's had throughout this game so far. Rico though, getting ready for another roach counterattack, just rallying these roaches around to make sure no hidden bases have been taken. Adding in a couple of spine crawlers to make sure that he's safe from counterattacks. But it's all going to come down to these expansions. If Rico's able to snipe down this hatch, which is only just above half HP, could run into some problems. And oh, the ultras being pulled down to the left. This is going to expose this hatchery. The roach is going for the drones and the guaranteed damage. Lambo pulling back now. He knows that he's going to have to bring a sizable force in order to defend this. Rico will snipe the hatchery, and that is a big win for the Vega Squadron Zerg. He gets an Ultralisk too, which is no easy achievement. Burrows up the roaches. Is there any detection about? There are two overseers. A couple of infestors a bit out of position here for Rico. Really not what he wanted. Having to spend some fungal growths on limbs, which is in by no way an efficient use of energy. And now having to face up against these Ultras. There are 14 Ultralisks tumbling through. And they are just going to be stomping forward trying to find anything in their way. While this is occurring though, Rico still has a few roaches, a little roach hit squad ready to get any damage down that he can. Looking to see what he can take out, focusing that evolution chamber starting with the plus three weapons. If it can snipe it, it'll be good, is going to be able to do so. Meanwhile though, it doesn't matter to Lambo who's pushing straight through. Rico working through these ultras and without the transfusers, they go down relatively quickly. The resupply frantically going through. Infested Terrans are there as well. But Lambo just has so many Ultralisks. Rico has to keep producing and he's got to produce as fast as possible because these Ultras make very short work of everything that stands in their way. The counter-attacking Roaches have been taken out or pulled back. Upgrades currently 3-1 up against 2-2 two, two with the Chitinous Plating upgrade. Forward comes Lambo. A lot of these ultras are looking fairly low. The queen's trying to get in the fight as well. Spinecrawl is attempting to help as best they can. So many ultras just cleaving their way through a lot of this army. The roach warren being focused now. That's a big win if it goes down. Really, this is Lambo's last attempt. He hasn't remade his fourth base. He's going to be struggling economically as we can see. And as these ultras reduce in number, they get a bit more vulnerable. 12 more roaches coming through. The roach one was not sniped. What is Lambo going to do? He's keeping these damaged ultras back as safely as he can. Rico attempting to kite through any ultras that remain. He needs to keep up a decent amount of this force. The other thing he can attempt to do is spread his units a bit better to prevent the cleave from doing too much damage. Rico loses an Festo over there, which is never ideal. Trying to snipe off that damaged ultra but not actually focusing the right one gets two there which is good a third one about to fall and despite Lambo trying to claw his way through this it's getting very dicey for him now things are looking very close he did manage to get the roach worm which prevents any further roaches from being constructed by Rico but the ultra list count now down to only four Johnny Rico's roaches still have a lot of work to do though there's also the overseer to prevent them using burrow micro to try and survive Fungal growth hits as well. And Rico GG's out there. Lambo just getting those ultras down and relentlessly pushing with them. And as I said at the start of the game, Ultralisks, there just isn't a solid counter in a Zerg army to actually contend with them. So Lambo now levels out this semi final to 1 1. And game number three will decide who makes it through to the final where there's prize money up for grabs.